Hi, this is Simon Upstall and welcome to another tutorial for Blackmagic Fusion. And today we're going to be taking a look at this double helix project. And recently I did a version of this using particles, but in this particular tutorial I'm going to be building it using the 3D tools in Fusion. And that gives us a very different look. So let's get started on this. So first of all, let's add a 3D shape. Let's set it to cylinder. And let's set its radius to 0.05, its height to 10, its base subdivisions to 40, and its height subdivisions to 200. And let's have a look at that. What I'm also going to do is to move it up five on Y, so it's sitting on the floor like that. And then what we also need to do is we need to move it across negative 0.5 on X. And then we'll add a 3D duplicator. Let's have a look at that. And all we need to do here is we need to set an X offset of one. And so now we've got both legs of our helix. And then we can add a bender. Look at that. We need to, first of all, set it to twist, and then let's play with the amount. And nothing is happening. And that's because we need to switch on group objects. And as soon as we do that, we get the twist that we're looking for. So what we need to do is we need to set that amount to four. And now you see we've got our double helix like that. So then let's look at creating these rungs of the ladder. I'm going to take that 3D shape and I'm going to copy and paste it. And let's set up a slightly different set of dimensions. So 0 0.04 for the radius. The height is going to be one because we just want it one unit wide. The base subdivision can be 20 and the height subdivisions can be 100. It's probably overkill actually, but let's leave it at that. So let's merge him over the top of the rest by piping him over the, that. And so we get a 3D merge. And then let's look at the 3D merge there. So where is he? He's all the way up here in the wrong place and we want him down here. So let's just set up his transform. So let's have, for X, let's have 0.5. For Y, let's have a negative 0.5. Let's come down to the Z rotation, set that to 90. The pivot, X pivot is going to be negative 0.5. And now it's sitting where we want it to at the bottom of the ladder. So now let's duplicate him to create the rungs of the ladder. So add to that shape a 3D duplicator. So number of copies is going to be 21. Let's have a time offset of negative eight. Let's have a Y offset of 0.5. And let's have a Y rotation of negative 72. And now I think you can see those rungs go neatly all the way to the top. I just want to stylize them just a little bit because I think that would be a little bit more interesting. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of shaping to that rung of the ladder. So I'm going to make a little space there and I'm going to add a bender. And I'm going to set the type to taper and the axis to X and increase that to one. Let's have a look at the result of the bender. So what I want to do here is use the range. So I want my max range to be 0.3. So it's just tapering the, the that end there. Make a little bit more space, copy the bender, command C, command V, and then let's set the amount to negative one. And then let's do the opposite with the range. So increase the max to one. We had 0.3, so let's go for 0.7. And now if we look at the result of both of those, you can see we've got this, this sort of tapering into the middle. And I think just, you know, if we look at the result here and bypass those, just a lot more interesting. So now let's talk about animation. How are we going to animate the arms of the spiral? You'd have probably thought that the easiest way is just to use uh, a scale, you know, st stick the pivot at the bottom. In fact, let's try that. Let's put the Y pivot at negative five. So it's down at the bottom there, and then unlock the scale, and then let's scale the Y. 
And you see what happens is it's it's just scaling as a spring, and we can't we don't actually want that. You might want it, but in this case we don't. There are various other things one could try, but I'm going to show you the one that's going to give you the least problems. And this is probably a little bit unexpected. So first of all, I'm going to make a background tool and I'm going to set a width of say 40 and a height of 100. And I'm going to copy it and paste it and pipe the output over the top. So it looks like that. This color I'm going to leave it black, but this background color I'm going to set to white. And then what we're going to do is we're going to animate the position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend my timeline. Let's go for 360 because I want to come to frame 180. And then at a frame 180, I'm going to keyframe the center. I'm going to set the Y position to 1.5. And if we come back to the start and set that back to its default of 0.5, you'll see we've got this little animation black revealing white. What I'm going to do is change this merge operator to XOR. And you see now, instead of having black and white, we've got white and transparency. So now what I can do is I can use that as the, the material source for the shape. First of all, I'm just going to add a blin after that merge, because we're going to do a little bit more work on this. And that's gone into the diffuse color of the blin. So then what we can do is pipe that into the arms of the helix. And you can see that my animation of the white and transparency is driving the growth of the helix. So then we need to talk about animating the rungs. And to do that, we're going to make a little bit of space after the second bender and before the duplicate 3D. And what I'm going to do is add a 3D transform here. So. What we need to do is open up the pivot and set the X pivot to negative 0.5. And then we need to unlock the scale and we can use these to, to drive the animation. So I'm going to come to frame 30 and I'm going to keyframe the X scale at one. And I'm going to come to the start and I'm going to set it to zero. Now, if you notice what happens if I just use the slider, it doesn't go all the way down to zero. So you actually do need to type that in. So now there's a growing, but I want you to look at what's happened. We've still got a little bit of a dot there. And to get rid of that, we just need to keyframe the Y scale over one frame. So come to the very beginning, set a keyframe, type in zero, step forward one frame, set that to one, and then those dots will have disappeared. So now everything together is looking like this and the rungs are growing nicely, pretty much in sync with our uprights. So now let's give our overall double helix a bit of a spin. So at the end of the chain, I'm going to add a 3D transform and have a look at that. And let's target the Y and we're just going to add an expression to Y and type time over two. And then that whole thing will just keep gently revolving like that. If you wanted to revolve faster, you could just do time. That'll double that speed. Let's go for that, actually. If you wanted to go faster still, you could do time times two, for example, or whatever. But anyway, so now let's add another 3D merge after this. To this, we're going to add a camera. So let's just set up that camera and we're going to have a Y value of five, Z value of 20 and a Z rotation of 65. Then we can add a three, the 3D renderer to the end of that merge. And looks like that. Let's turn on the lighting. We'll need to add a light to that 3D merge as well. So add a three point light. So let's tidy that up. Let's put the three point light above there. Let's add a background. And let's pipe the output of the 3D renderer over the background and look at that. Brighten up the background a little bit like so. And now we can talk about just a little bit of basic uh, texturing to this. And first of all, I want to address a little bit of an issue that we have because of the way that I'm driving this transparency of the uprights, uh, or rather the, the growth of the uprights. And if I play from the beginning, you'll see we've got a sort of ghost of a, 
of an effect here. And what we're seeing there is the fact that we've got a specular value. So if I turn that down to zero, that, that disappears. But what we actually wanted to do, we, we do want to be able to have a little bit of specularity. So what I'm going to do is actually use the output of this map here uh, to go into the specular color material. So if I pipe that into the specular color material input, you'll see that disappears, but it doesn't deprive me of the ability to have specularity in my object. Let's now just add a bit of a bump to this. And to do that, I'm going to use a fast noise. And I'm going to add to the output of that a bump map tool. And then let's just set up the fast noise. Let's set the image to be kind of thin and tall, so 40 by 2000, because bearing in mind we've got to map it onto this, these very tall uprights. Come to the noise and set that contrast up to, say, 3. And let's set the bump height scale to 4 in that bump map tool. So now we can pipe the output of that into the bump map input of the blin, which is that one there. And you can see we've now got a bump that looks like that. So we can do the same thing with our rungs, but we need to do a slightly different version of this. So I'm going to copy the fast noise and the bump map and paste them. Uh, we don't need such a tall map for this, so I can go for just like 100, and that'll probably do us. And so we need to now create a blin, but not directly after the bump map, otherwise that'll go into the diffuse map input. So we need to pipe the uh, bump map output into the bump map input of the blin, and then we can take the blin into the rungs. And we can play with the height map scale till we get what we want. And they now look like that. So let's talk a little bit about the diffuse color. Now, if you remember, we had this um, map for the tr transparency of the uprights. And what we can do is use this color, the one that's white, and just use that to create the color for, for the diffuse. And you can see as I'm changing that, that's changing the uprights. And then we can use that same color as the diffuse color for the rungs. So I'm going to pipe that into the diffuse color for the rungs, and then they're both being driven by this master color. OK, another thing I'd like to talk about is what if we wanted to have more rungs? So if I come to my duplicate 3D here with for the rungs, if we wanted them closer together, so that would mean 0.25, so half the half the Y offset, we'll have to make an adjustment to the rotation. So we've halved the offset, so we'll just halve the Y rotation. So negative 36 instead of negative 72. And now they fit, and we'll also need to increase that number. So instead of 21, we need 41. And let's just reset this view to the full frame. And you can see we've got the full complement, just to double the number. So now we're pretty much done in terms of the modeling and texturing of the project. But I'll, I'll spend a couple of minutes on just setting up a very basic look. The first thing I want to do is just move that point light so it's more of a backlight. So negative 1 on x and positive 3 on y. And then I'm going to adjust the camera. Now, one of the things I like to do with the camera is to link the Z pivot to the Z translation. So I'm going to add an expression to the Z and pick whip the Z translation. And I'm going to type times minus 1. And you'll see what we've now got the same figure as the Z translation, but a negative of it. And what that allows us is, is to manipulate the camera much more easily in terms of the rotation. Uh, let's, let's come into 10 on the Z translation, so we're roughly about there. And, and you'll see that these, these, these are much more easy to, to manipulate now because the, the pivot point is, is located on the, the center of the, the object. OK, so let's just have a look at the background here, this background color. Let's give it a little vignette. So I'm going to add a brightness contrast to that. And let's reduce the brightness. And then let's add a circular mask and invert it. 
and soften that off quite a lot. And then let's set the width to 0.75. And then we can rotate the angle of the vignette so it's following our, our helix a bit more. Let's increase the softness of that even more maybe. And it's a good idea when you're doing graduated backgrounds to add grain so that you, compression doesn't add banding to the, to the result. I won't do that here, you, you know how to do that. And there's one final trick I want to do, which is add some glow. Now we could just add a glow to the renderer, but it's very, very ugly. And I want you to, to, to look why. Look at the black areas and black doesn't glow, it's only the white glows. So let's not do it that way. Let's do it my way. And let's add to the flow a luma keyer, actually to the flow itself. Let's pipe the renderer into the luma keyer. And you'll see the luma keyer is now just picking up the, the white areas. And I might just pump up their strength by using the high value there. And then I'm going to add a blur. And let's set that to something like 10. And then we can pipe the renderer output over the top of the blur. Look at the result. And then we can use that merged output as the foreground to our background. And let's have a look at that. And you'll see how much nicer that looks than the, the default glow. We're just glowing the bright bits. And now just before we finish, I realize I've missed a step uh, in terms of the growth of the rungs when we changed the, the number of rungs. I needed to change the time offset on the duplicate. So uh, this is our rungs chain. I'm going to come to that duplicate 3D and we need to just change that time offset. I'm going to go for something like negative 4.5, which I think is going to just give me the perfect result. So there you go. There, they're keeping in sync very nicely with the growth of the uprights. So there you go. Uh, well, I think what we've seen is that there are lots of different ways in, in which to achieve the same sort of result in Fusion, depending on the type of look you want to go for. You might prefer the particles look, or you might prefer this more realistic 3D look. The key thing to understand is there's no right way. There's just a way that works best for you. So anyway, I hope that's given you some inspiration and thanks very much indeed for watching. See you another time.